Shalom from the Faculty of Medicine. And I'm here representing basically the reInvent team who has brought you this seminar in collaboration with our valued partners from Merck. Um, okay, so I'm going to jump into it. I'm just going to give a short introduction to Chris. So Chris right over here, Black Marketing CEO, Chris Reed. Um, he is the most, uh, I, I guess his name is basically synonymous with being a LinkedIn guru. And his profile is the most viewed profile on LinkedIn with 70,000 followers. So I think it speaks for itself. And he has also won numerous awards, including Asia's most influential digital media professional. Yeah. So today he's going to share his insights with us as to how um, we can use LinkedIn to enhance our personal and professional brand. And um, just a little note, right after the seminar and Q&A, we'll also be launching the first ever in the region a joint um, LinkedIn page um, in collaboration between NUS Medicine and Merck, so stick around. Uh, so for now, I would like us to please welcome Chris. Thank you very much. So this is very much about you, so I want you to get a lot out of this. So you might start off by actually downloading the app on your phone to make sure it's available because I'm going to show you a trick a bit later on which will enable you to connect with every single other person in this room and you can use it at parties and anywhere else you might want to. But you need to the app, the app. So everyone have the app for when I do this trick in about 25 minutes time. Also, we have some incentives because you're a Singapore audience, you don't have asking questions, but I'm going to give you a free gift if you ask a question. I find this works. But the question can't be, can I have a free book, please, Chris? It's going to be an intelligent question about LinkedIn. Because this is all about LinkedIn. And it's all about you and about how you can get a lot out of LinkedIn. Because you can all benefit from this uh, in your careers, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, a CEO, or just have a fantastic job. So I want you to get a lot out of this. Because I believe that every single person has a metaphorical mohawk. Because that is key to LinkedIn. Your USP, your strength, your point of difference is your mohawk. So how do you bring that out? That's what we're going to talk about today. You need to think about what makes you different to your peers, to your competitors, to other people you're competing with, not just in Singapore, but across the world. But why do I have a mohawk? Well, I came to Singapore 10 years ago, looking something like this. Without a mohawk, just looked like any other Ang Mo that comes along to Singapore. And I thought, okay, I need a point of difference, because I wasn't different. So I started growing this little mohawk. And then people started saying, oh, I like your mohawk. Oh, that's interesting, because no one has a mohawk here, of course. So then I went to the ultimate extreme and started doing blonde and red and pink and it's now orange and pink because people point that out and it's an icebreaker. So when I appeared in like Channel News Asia with Lance, for example, talking about the success of black marketing, it stood out. So it's all about how you actually then stand out, but also leads to a conversation. It's not standing out for the sake of standing out. It's standing out so that people feel comfortable talking to me and I them. And also it's an icebreaker in terms of talking about things like personal branding. And that's what this is all about. You know, I use the personal branding to market my books, for example. When did you last go into Kino Kinua and find a book which had a mohawk on? Not very often. Not unless you were in the music section and the Sex Pistols were there. Nowhere else. Not in the business section, certainly. They're normally boring and bland. But it's about personal branding to me. So it's a natural thing to put in my and use for me to start a conversation about personal branding. But why LinkedIn? Well, I came to Singapore 10 years ago, didn't know a single person here. But I use my network in the UK to reach out to people here on LinkedIn. Those people were very happy to meet me, have a coffee with me. Some of the people I met then are still my friends today. But I got my first, my second, my third jobs by actually doing that. By the power of networking on LinkedIn. And those jobs were marketing jobs across the whole of Asia. But I didn't know anyone in Asia. So how do I reach people in China or Indonesia or Australia? Use LinkedIn. So I then started really, really learning about how you can actually Find LinkedIn, use LinkedIn to achieve your goals. Uh, because it is number one social media platform in the world. And as you can see here, it's all over the world. Literally every single country in the world apart from two. Can anyone name the two countries it's not in? No, China's up there with 50 million. North Korea, someone said North Korea, correct. What's the other rogue nation of the world that is not in? Someone said Russia. Yes, correct, a big gap up there is Russia. It's banned in Russia. So it's available in China, but it's banned in Russia. Make of that what you want. It's available in Syria, but banned in North Korea. There you go. And as you can see here, it literally is all over the world. Asia is particularly massive. India is enormous. 
as you can see. So if you get a message every hour from an engineer in India trying desperately to get out of India, that's why. There's 60 million people there on LinkedIn in India. It's growing massively. I'm fascinated by this figure here. 7 million people in Colombia. They're all entrepreneurs. They're all doing import export. Everyone seen Netflix? No, not Narcos? No, okay, fine. But I do believe that LinkedIn is like the godfather. It's who you know, not what you know. So it's about knowing you guys and you guys knowing each other and then being able to connect with each other and communicate with each other and contact each other. Not maybe now, but maybe later on. Maybe in the future. And use the alumni network here as well. I mean, the NUS has an amazing alumni network. Use the alumni network. Because you'd be amazed the amount of alumni in Singapore and across the world that you can find on LinkedIn. So reach out and use it for your advantage, and it really is who you know, not what you know. But also, LinkedIn's very much a gamification platform. And what I mean by that is the more you do things on LinkedIn, the more you get rewarded. The more they increase your rankings, the more they boost you. So you need to do some activity, which I'll show you today, and then you'd be rewarded by LinkedIn, then you'd be more addicted to it and do more things, which is the idea of all the social media platforms. But LinkedIn works that way too. So I love this quote from James Blunt, not because I like James Blunt, because no one would admit on stage to liking James Blunt, but I like it because it's about LinkedIn. I'm self-deprecating because I'm British. If I was American, I would tell you how great I was. And you get that on, Amer on LinkedIn. You get all these people in America going, I'm fantastic, I'm amazing, I created this auditorium. No, you didn't. But I bet you it's on LinkedIn, so it must be true. And then no problem at all actually self-promoting, whereas British people, Singaporeans, uh, Chinese, New Zealanders, no, no, it's, it's the team effort. We did it together. But the problem with doing that is there will be some American who comes along and steals that job or that investment or that client because they'll say they do it themselves. So basically, you've got to out American Americans and self-promote yourself on LinkedIn in a business context. So I'll show you how to do that today too. Because if you Google yourself, your entire reputation comes up. Everything comes up there, whether you like it or not. Your Facebook post from when you were a teenager went to that party. Your LinkedIn posts, your Instagram posts. She's laughing very heartily at that. <laughs> I have to Google you afterwards to find those posts. But it's there, your reputation's there. So just like Gladiator, when the evil emperor tried to kill Gladiator, couldn't just kill him, because his reputation would go on. So your reputation is on and on and on. It's what people say about you, what people talk about you. So in Gladiator, the evil emperor had to try and kill his reputation, not just kill the man. Because your reputation's all online. And I know that I've had a painful experience. Just don't mention taxi drivers to me. As you will see later on, I'll talk about that a bit later, but I had a painful experience writing about taxi drivers. So I'll talk about how I then rebuilt my reputation as a result of that experience. Because you are in control of your own LinkedIn reputation on LinkedIn. It's all up to you, that's what this talks about. You are in control of your LinkedIn reputation. You are in control of what's on your LinkedIn. You are in control of how you come across on LinkedIn. And when I Google someone, if I Google one of you, the first thing that tends to happen is your LinkedIn comes up first, not your Facebook, not your Instagram. Because LinkedIn's very powerful when it comes to Google. So think about that when people are about to meet you or interview you or invest in you, they're Googling you. And your LinkedIn profile's coming up, whether you like it or not. So the top tip, the first tip, is your visual impression. Obviously, I'm very big on visual impressions. But you've got to think about that on LinkedIn because people like to see a big visual impression on LinkedIn. It's the first impression you've got. Like meeting people like today at a networking event or an event like this. So if I show you the Joker, you get that fantastic visual impression. You see there, his mohawks, the scar, and the witty one-liners, and the great dress sense. So you don't forget that. His brand values come through. If I show you Karen here, her mohawk is the fact that she is the GPS girl. So she is on two and a half billion devices going recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. <laughs> you don't forget that. I saw her at a conference once and she came in at the back going recalculating, 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 taking several turns at the same time. And she's the only person I remember from that conference. Because she stands out. Because obviously she doesn't do GPS girl the whole time. She's a keynote speaker, she's a concert performer, she's a coach, she's a leader. But you remember her because her mohawk is the GPS girl. And she's fantastic. So you've got to think about what your mohawk is. If I show you Sophia the robot, obviously Sophia the robot's mohawk is the fact that she's a robot. But she's on LinkedIn, sharing. 
Now your background picture is phenomenally important. I show you Andrew here at the Ritz Carlton. He's at this wonderful, iconic venue. It'd be fantastic. That's obviously the days when they have their G8 or the G20 there when it's no smog. But it's fantastic because he's actually marketing his venue through the background picture of LinkedIn. So you can use that too to market yourself. If I show you Dahlia here, Dahlia is a local entrepreneur. So she's marketing herself on her brand here, Euphoric Coaching. You can do the same thing. If I show you Ryan here, he goes up mountains, climbs mountains for the BBC and Amazon Prime, and then does talks about climbing up mountains. So naturally, he's got himself atop of a mountain and saying, this is me. Bang, you get what he does in one fell swoop. It's brilliant. And if you're gonna do a product like Pippa, you actually have the product up here. It's just classic marketing. It's easy marketing. It's free as well. Completely free. You can do this too. Don't just have the blue background that LinkedIn gives you. Actually think about how you present your personal brand on LinkedIn. And if you're going to call yourself Pink Tank, have a pink tank on your background picture. So I think it's just brilliant. Don't do things like this. Because as much as I might aspire to being George Clooney one day, I'm not. So I can't use this picture to enhance my personal brand. People will find out. This is what I call your classic Facebook photograph. You're down Boat Key, you've had a few drinks, you're in some KTV bar at 3 a.m. Someone says, dress as a panda. You've had a few drinks, you'll agree to anything. Someone else says, put it on your LinkedIn. Not a great idea. Don't use Facebook pictures on LinkedIn. Which one's Melita? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. How can you talk to someone you don't even know who you're talking to? Very impossible. And this guy could not decide which photograph to use, so he used all the photographs he could find. Not a great idea. You look totally indecisive if you do that. Elizabeth here went for the full Tinder look. Really not a good idea, Elizabeth, when you work for a small company called the Hyatt Hotel Group and you're in charge of human resources. Really not a good idea these days. And why would you do this? <laughs> Didn't one of his friends say, uh, Philip, there's something wrong with your LinkedIn profile. You're headless. Really not a great idea at all. Unless you're selling suits or something. It's not a really good idea, is it? And if you're going to be a keynote speaker, it's best to have an audience like this, not an audience like that. Because if you're a keynote speaker and the one person is leaving, that's not a great look for a keynote speaker. And definitely, definitely, definitely do not do this if you live in China. <laughs> very, very career limiting, I would suggest. Jason's now sweeping the floors. And unless you work for Marina Bay Sands, Singapore Tourism Board, don't do this. Because you're promoting the integrated resort, sorry, casino. And you shouldn't be doing this, unless, of course, you do work for MBS. Then you have no excuse. You have to put it there. And in fact, if you work for MBS and you do this, you really have no excuse. You can't say, I didn't know what to put there. Because it's the most Instagram hotel in the whole of the world. See, so I have a skew of iconic pictures. So you should never have the blue background. But your personal brand statement is very important. If I show you this, you understand it. Nike, just do it. It's been the iconic slogan for 30, 40 years. This, obviously everyone knows, Apple, think different. Mine is the only CEO with a mohawk. People tend to forget, remember that. It's an icebreaker, it's an opening gambit, it's an opening way of actually talking about things. But it's very important because your headline follows you around. Everywhere on LinkedIn, if you post, it follows you around. If you share, if you like, you comment, it follows you. So it's constantly, constantly marketing. If someone tags you, it comes up. Someone searches for you, it comes up. Someone finds you on someone else's profile, it comes up. See what I do, see what Frederick does, and you can see what this book called Bill Gates does. But if you don't put it there, what you do, and your brand positioning statement, how do people know what you do? They're gonna click on mine, they're gonna click on Frederick, click on Bill, but you probably won't click on somebody else's. So think about the words you want to put there, because it's selling you. It's constantly, socially selling you. You might want to challenge people. Mike Naki here, the coolest guy in Nashville. Google it to see for yourself. So we did, and he is. He's the coolest guy in Nashville. Brilliant, because he does an SEO campaign. But imagine he came second. Imagine being the second coolest guy in Nashville. Not quite the same ring about it. If you're hiring, tell people you're hiring. If you're looking for a job, tell people you're looking for new opportunities. Because people actually do do a search on LinkedIn for looking for opportunities. So use the search engine on LinkedIn like you would do on Amazon or Google or another platform. Don't do things like this. 
Lonely and young girl. It's not Tinder. Elbert felt the need to put human being down. As if you do a search on LinkedIn saying, I need to find a human being to talk to. Dave K here, typically American, said he's a demigod at medical miracle health. Really not a great idea to sell that miracle health with that kind of photograph, Dave. Shali Shara, wife of Stephen Shara. Why would you do that? Particularly as Dave did not, Stephen did not reciprocate. Stephen's got, hasn't got husband of Shelly Shah. Surely he should. I actually wrote to him, he didn't reply. Because Dave does, Dale has spouse of owner at Picoso Mexican restaurant. See, he has no brand status by himself. He's merely going out with someone who owns a dodgy restaurant in Hong Kong. Lecturer at retired and enjoying time with the family. Does he look like he's enjoying time with the family? No, I think he'd rather be back at work. <laughs> and if you're going to win an award, it's best to have an up-to-date award. Although it's like one of those restaurants where you win an award 10 years ago and the chef left. And they haven't won an award since. Particularly if you were people of the year and now you're a person of the year. Not a great idea. You might want to tell people where you are. A lot of people in Asia travel. So I put on where I'm going to be, for example. Sydney, Berlin, Munich, Zurich. Ron does the same thing. He travels like 200 days a year. Phenomenal. So he puts it on the top, puts it on the headline. He even says when he's going to be in Singapore. But I love the way that Landy does this. So I trained Landy and she's taken it to the next extreme. She just uses initials. You've got to work it out. So this is like South Africa, Johannesburg, Cape Town, I think, Kazakhstan, El Salvador. And then she's anticipated Brexit by having UK forward slash Europe. And you want to complete your profile, because that's part of LinkedIn's gamification. But it also means that people can read about your story. So your summary section is very important. And your first three lines are phenomenally important. Because if your first three lines are really boring, no one sir, goes on to see more. But if they start off with things like, you've got 1,300 recommendations and you're controversial, people might read more. Think about your story. How are you going to get people to read your story a bit more on LinkedIn? And then you can use the 2,000 characters here to tell your story. And it should be your story. Don't just talk about your business and what you're doing now. Tell your people about your story. And then add things like videos on, for example, because LinkedIn's a very visual medium. And you can link it to your YouTube and just put some videos up there. People can watch you in action. People can actually watch you interviewing, interviewed. Your personality, your personal brand comes across. Same thing with your company page. So you want to talk about your company in a positive way. And take it from the company page. If you don't know what to put, just copy and paste the company page, put it on your LinkedIn, then at least you're being brand consistent. And then have the links to their website, their YouTube, their point drive, so that people can find out more about the company you work for. What else do you do? For example, I lecture at NUS, so I put on, in fact, I do this on my LinkedIn, so people know it's part of my personal brand, so what's yours? I also contribute to the Business Times, so I put that there. I mentor people at SMU, so I put that there. So what do you do? What's the voluntary stuff you do? How do you add to society? What do you do outside of your current role? You then want to add recommendations, skills and awards. Recommendations are very, very powerful on LinkedIn. It's not just you saying a good job. It's other people also saying a good job. You want to have skills down there. You want to be endorsed for. So you control your skills. Make sure they're the right kind of skills. Make sure you're endorsed by people who know something about those skills. Don't do things like this. On your summary, put a lifelong passion for problem solving. Because what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It applies to all of you, it applies to anybody. Make it about you, the story's about you. This is even worse. Business leader, why would you put that down? It's a waste of space, you might as well not put anything down, put business leader. So it doesn't describe this person's brand at all. This is a genuine, genuine profile. None of these profiles are made up. Believe me, I don't need to make any of this shit up. This is like real, real stuff you find on LinkedIn on a daily basis. This is a love doctor, and the love doctor does things like convince parents for a love marriage, affair other person, as if you can have an affair by yourself. <laughs> Get your lover back. And then he obviously moved on from love to divorce. And then he obviously branched out from love and divorce into other things. So then he started sorting out your business problem and your study problem, but then went back to love. Uh, but my favorite service, the genuine service this genuine guy does, my favorite service is this one. Be free from enemy forward slash second wife. <laughs> I have to go that second wife business because it's big. 
And then Peter here is out of work, so LinkedIn tell me that Peter is celebrating a work anniversary at Out of Work. Not only that, they say congratulate Peter for being out of work for four years. Brilliant. Don't do that. And don't be endorsed for PowerPoint, Excel, and telling the time. Not a great idea. And if you're English or Singaporean, we cannot be endorsed for awesomeness and general awesomeness. Only Americans can be endorsed for that. And why would you do this? Belle here is so proud of her current company, she doesn't mention it in her headline. But she does tell you where she used to work. She used to work at Uber, Netflix, and Spotify. But why wouldn't she say what she does now, not what she did in the past? But the worst people here are Googlers, ex-Googlers, more precise. If you put in to LinkedIn, ex-Google, 46,000 people come up. Where they've used it in their headline, things like this, ex-Google. What I think is hilarious is that this guy here works for LinkedIn, but still put the need to put ex-Google down. Because working for LinkedIn isn't good enough. This guy even works for Google, but still felt the need to put ex-McKinsey, ex-Goldman Sachs. Don't do that. Focus on your forwards. Focus on the experience you've got and your business now and your job now. Because you do want to exploit the SEO of LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn works like a search engine, just like Google and Amazon does. So you want to find out your own views across 90 days, and your own search appearances, you can. Under your summary section, you can see where you are. And you can measure it and monitor it on a daily basis. And you can track how well you're doing in terms of, as soon as you start doing what I tell you today, today, your, search, your viewed profiles will go up, and your search appearances will also go up. The largest search appearance I ever got was this one, 109,000 which apparently is the, the world, largest in the world because we gamify it. Appearances we get. And often we do that by increasing our work position. So I showed you before how you add in different aspects of what you do. Don't just accept one thing. That's one way of gamifying it. The other way is actually by putting in different locations. So I put in global, or I put in all over the world, or I put in Switzerland and Singapore. Because if you don't put in the country you're working in, you don't get found in that country. So you might want to think about if you work in, say, Malaysia and Indonesia, put those countries down too on LinkedIn, then you get found in those countries. Therefore, your search then goes up in those countries. It's a bit like the difference between having Google.com and Google.sg. Think about having Google.com because it's more powerful than Google.sg. Even my other brand, for example, you put down the different brands where you do them. Then you get found more as a result of it. So it increases your searchability. And you want to use the keywords that make sense to you. What do you want to be found for? So if I want to be found for personal branding, 65,000 results come up because I've got personal branding there, personal branding there, and personal branding there. The more you repeat what you do in the context of your roles, the more you come up. If I put in LinkedIn to LinkedIn, 1.7 million things come up, results. LinkedIn comes first, I come second. Because I'm using LinkedIn in my headline, in my company, in my personal branding. If I put LinkedIn in terms of company searches, uh, sorry, in terms of people, I come number one. In terms of companies, black marketing my company only gets beat by this other company called B2B LinkedIn. Even LinkedIn doesn't beat my company when it comes to company search. But because we're using LinkedIn and LinkedIn twice in our headline and throughout our description. So LinkedIn's a search engine just like Google is. So you want to make sure that you are found for the things you want to be found for on LinkedIn. If you put Mohawk into LinkedIn, 135,000 results come up, which surprised me. And funnily enough, I am number one. I was really surprised by other people coming up though. Now you do want to create a content marketing plan. Very, very straightforward to do, but you need to follow this simple rule, 411. So 411 is one hard sell post. So if I was to talk about black marketing, that's a hard sell post, because I'm selling my company to you. But then I have to combine that with one soft sell post. So if I talk about Elizabeth Tharanos, for example, and about how the employees there actually put their experience on LinkedIn, because it's obviously a very disgraced company now, that was a good article to share. And it was related to my business, but wasn't marketing my business. So it was interesting. And then you have to do four unrelated posts, which have nothing to do with the business at all. So that might be this article here about, say, Singapore and Zurich, because my biggest market is actually Zurich, my home is obviously Singapore. So I put about the fact that they were the first and second best place in the world to live. Or this one here about Nike, 
having a polarizing brand. Because I have a polarizing brand too, so I like sharing other brands that are also polarizing. Or well, this one here, our football manager. Having a racism problem because all the white players are valued more than black players. Or this one here about talking to strangers, because I love talking to strangers, I'll talk to anybody. Some people run away, but most people talk to me. It helps having a mohawk. And you want to blog and you want to share. Customer service is really important. So you look at someone like Eva. She shared a simple blog about Grab, having three different prices from her home. And she wrote about it, got 300,000 views, got lots of engagement, lots of likes and comments. Most importantly, Anthony Tan, who's the CEO of Grab, saw it wasn't very impressed, but she got a meeting with him. And they were able to have a dialogue about it, and then she works now for Grab as a result of it, because he could see that it was basically she was sharing it from the right kind of direction and motivation. So it helped him improve. Well, this one here. I went to a restaurant in Asia Square, and they served me Perrier Jouet Champagne in a Moe and Chandon glass. Brilliant marketing. And I actually asked them, why are you sharing, why are you actually serving Perrier Jouet in a Moe and Chandon glass? And they actually legitimately told me, we have the glasses, but we haven't smashed all the Moe and Shandon ones yet. It's like, oh my God. So I did the post, and the brand director of Perrier Jouet saw it, and rang me up and said, name the restaurant, and I'll send you a crate of champagne. Before she could say crate of champagne, I'd name the restaurant. Champagne was very nice, thank you. And this one here, it's like sometimes the customer service is fantastic, so you want to say, if you have great customer service. This is at the Shangri-La, where I had a staycation recently. And this lady here remembered me from my last vacation three years ago. Obviously, I do have a mohawk, but she actually remembered other things about me as well. It's amazing. So I did a post on LinkedIn about it, complimenting the Shangri-La on their training and retention of staff and just their customer service. So it doesn't always have to be a complaint on LinkedIn. It can be positive and a praise as well. You do want to be yourself. I was in uh, Hong Kong. I was at the Ritz-Carlton. They gave me this boardroom for free. And they basically made an apology because they, my room wasn't ready. And I wrote this amazing post, it was a very, very simple post about how great the customer service was here. But it was fantastic because this guy here saw the post, and he's the CEO of the Ritz-Carlton across the entire region. And he was very impressed by the fact that it got 54,000 views. And he said, how can you do this for me? So he became a client because of that post, which does not mention my company at all, which is the way content marketing should work. The power of that. We also now work for the Ritz-Carlton in Hong Kong, the Ritz-Carlton in Shanghai, by a post that does not mention our service or does not mention our brand. That's the benefits of content marketing. And you want to be spontaneous and authentic and on LinkedIn on a Sunday. Because it's a misnomer that no one checks LinkedIn on a Sunday or Saturday. They do. And because multinationals don't work on Saturdays and Sundays, it means entrepreneurs like I can actually get more benefit by actually sharing posts. Some of my best posts are on Saturday and Sunday because still people are looking for good quality content and they will respond. So I did this post, I went to Tokyo. And it was a Sunday night as well. I went to Tokyo, went through the airport and this happened. They were so fascinated by me, they opened up my bag because they did not believe I'd be carrying all my books. And they literally went through all my books and started leafing through them, looking for the drugs and the cocaine and the guns and I don't know what, what else. And I took a picture, put it on LinkedIn and this guy told me not to take a picture. Too late, it was already on LinkedIn. But it was brilliant because I shared this, and by the morning, it had like 100,000 views, with other people also sharing their experience about how they got stopped in, hotel, in airports too. Including one guy who stopped 49 times at Changi. 49 times, and he was a PR as well. He got stopped 49 times at Changi. So it basically is relating a story which is relatable to other people who travel. And obviously many people in Singapore travel. So it's just as that kind of spontaneous post, all of you can do the same thing. It doesn't have to be Shakespeare, it doesn't have to be rocket science, it's just simple experiences that people like. You might want to talk about passion about affecting your professionals. I did this post a few weeks ago, for example, about Chester Bennington. And it got like 25,000 views, but the most important thing was the 64 comments of people who related how they also had friends who committed suicide. And that's a business problem, it's a mental wellness problem in Singapore and elsewhere. And so it was amazing to share a post about something real like that, where people really responded in a very, very positive way by sharing their experience and even reaching out to people too. So that's what the benefit of LinkedIn, quality dialogue, you don't get anonymous trolls, you actually get quality dialogue and quality topics and thought-provoking topics too. And it's not the size of your following matters, the story. Look at Natasha here. A few weeks ago, she had 242 connections and she is in New Zealand. 
and nobody cares about New Zealand. But her post was amazing, because her post was very simple. Her post was about being a single mother, and about being pregnant at 18 years old, and about how she just benefited and just studied and qualified. And that resonated with people. And she got 300,000 likes, 18,000 comments, and something like, something like 10 million views by that simple, simple post. Within two weeks, she had 20,000 followers. So it's not the size of your following, it's not the size of basically your story, it's the quality of your story, it's what your story is that resonates with people. You wanna be a leader, so there's another stat you should remember, one, nine, 90. One percent of people across all social media actually create. Only one percent. Nine percent across all social media like, share, and comment. Ninety percent of people do nothing. Absolutely nothing. So the majority of you guys will do nothing. And I've seen some of your profiles. You do nothing. Because you're ninety percent. But that's across all social media. Ninety percent. But you want to be more like Stephanie. Stephanie's a fantastic Singaporean icon. Because she has similar hairdo to me, she gets the fact she has to express herself on LinkedIn. Her personal branding has to come through. She runs a law firm here, very male dominated. Most of our clients are government, very male dominated. So she has to stand out in many, many ways. And she does. So when she's in the business times, she puts it on LinkedIn so that you know she's important. You know her thoughts are important. When she's in the FT or the Wall Street Journal, same thing. She's enhancing her career. She's self-promoting herself because she has to fight that bit harder being a female entrepreneur in Singapore rather than being a male entrepreneur. And I want to tag people. If you want to take a picture today, you tag me. It lands, and then it comes up in my feed. And then I can see it and I share it back. You want to hashtag topics. So LinkedIn, you can follow topics now. Things like social media, social media marketing, for example. You want to own those topics too. And you want to love them or hate them. Basically, these are the most kind of organic influences. Everyone might have seen a post by Oleg, not my style, but very popular, or Bridget, same thing. They've both got two million followers each from nothing. And lots of people like them. I prefer alternatives like Mike Winnett, who is the UK's number one demotivational speaker. So you go along to him and he demotivates you. You make you feel really bad afterwards. But it's fantastic because he's doing a parody of LinkedIn. And he's a parody of Bridget and he's a parody of Oleg. He's now got like 70,000 um, followers. And you can actually endorse him for being endorsed by strangers for skills he doesn't have. Which is brilliant because he's just taken the mech. Or you can basically endorse him for demotivational speaking. And you can actually endorse him for very bad jokes and terrible puns as well. And even his recommendations are basically demotivating. So basically, this person here talks about how the fact that basically they were feeling fine until they had Mike's talk come along and then they feel bad afterwards because he was demotivating them. But it's brilliant, all his recommendations do this. It's like a whole parody of people recommending him. So you want to do videos as well. Videos are very, very important on LinkedIn. So up to 10 minutes you can share in the feed, so you can do it on your phone, and then you just upload it. LinkedIn loves video. Very, very simple to do. And I did a test. I put the same video on LinkedIn, and on YouTube. So I put it on YouTube, and as you can see, very popular on YouTube, I got 35 views. Put the same video on LinkedIn, got 20,000 views. More importantly, I know who these people are who liked and commented and viewed my profile. There's no data on YouTube. You don't have to register to go on YouTube. You have to register on LinkedIn. So the data is on LinkedIn. So you really want to think about your video strategy on LinkedIn. Tell stories on LinkedIn. Share good news on LinkedIn. Talk about your success of the week. Do demonstrations on LinkedIn. Post questions on LinkedIn. Share achievements on LinkedIn videos. All these things are getting hundreds of thousands of views. Share bad news on LinkedIn. Share news first on LinkedIn. Show some interesting business things on LinkedIn. So like this, this one's got 1.4 million views. Thought leaders, million views of Bill Gates, Gary V, half a million views. Reports. I particularly like these kind of reports. The report here, apparently, that Google and Facebook you shouldn't be using. You should be using Pornhub. But you can't get Pornhub in Singapore. So you have to use your VPN if you're thinking about using that for marketing purposes or any other kind of purposes. Now you want to look at employee benefits. 400,000 views. Interviews. Finding your why is the biggest one I could find. Three and a half million views. Simple post, but it's a video. 
Think about how you can use video to enhance your personal brand on LinkedIn. I like the fact he says, every day I wake up at 3.59. You have to get into the fact you've got before 4 a.m. But it's brilliant, it's interesting. You wanna be authentic. Simone Haynes very good at this. When she's in the studio, she actually records herself like dancing along to the music, showing her passion and purpose. She gets hundreds of thousands of views, like lots of likes and comments. Or Sally here, video is phenomenally good. She gets many, many comments, many, many likes, really engagement. I don't know what you're thinking, they're both attractive females, they're bound to get lots of views on, on LinkedIn, Chris. But you don't have to be that, you can be authentic. You can also do videos that are 10 minutes long, have 10,000 views, and you can look like this. And I did this on a Sunday. And I shared this amazing video about this amazing book called The Reputation Game, which you should read, all about how your reputation is designed by people who are talking about you, not by you. And I tagged the two authors on a Sunday, and they both responded. I don't know these guys at all. But I tagged them, they got, they got a notification. They then responded. You know, Rupert here, phenomenal, the best speed date summary of my book I've ever seen. He appreciated the fact I took the time to actually do the video and actually shared it with him. So you can do the same thing. Next time you read a book, put a summary of it on LinkedIn. Tag the author. And now we're going to do the product I just showed you. So what we're going to do now is get your LinkedIn app out. And you want to go to the little buttons down there. The two little people. And you want to press that. And then you see this one says, find nearby. And then you'll be able to connect with every single other person in this room. Okay, so two little people down the bottom. And then it'll come up with find nearby. And then you start seeing it populating like that. So the two little people down there, and then the find nearby up there, and then you'll see it populating. And then you can connect with every single person in this room who's on LinkedIn. And then at least you'll have a couple of hundred connections of people who are similar to you. See it coming up in the feed. So it's brilliant. So that's great for parties, events, but you have to do it all at the same time. And you have to do it in the same room. So it doesn't work like WeChat or Tinder or anything like that. You have to do it at the same time. But it's great. It's great for events like this to get to know each other. So then connect with everybody who actually, um, who's connected on that, who you see on that. And then you all have something in common. You all basically live and work at the same university. And you all came to my talk and you're all learning about LinkedIn. So you can see how each other's progress is. So you should have a screen like that. Now let's look at some of your profiles. It's my favorite bit. <laughs> Ala Malou, is she here? I probably pronounced her name completely wrong. She's now hiding, saying, no, I'm not, gonna, not here at all. Definitely not here. But as you can see, she hasn't got a background picture, and she needs an about us section. She's got a small about us section, which is fine, but she needs to expand it a bit more with a bit more content. She does put she's down here, which is great, but she could actually update what she's doing now, because obviously the last thing there says 2016. But she has no content marketing. She's part of the 90% who do nothing at all. Angelica, is Angelica here? No one's gonna put their hand up now, are they? <laughs> so again, she has no picture, no background picture, she does say she's an executive here, doesn't say what she does. And again, she has no content marketing. Angeline, Angeline here. Either all these people are very brave or not very, all oh, they're basically just gonna hide it, basically. So Angeline, is that you, Angeline? Yes, you are Angeline, yes. <laughs> I don't know what you, it's fine, you've got a nice picture there, you're talking about. So, background picture, as you can see. You can also have an about us section as well. Um, and you've got down here, obviously, what you do here, but you don't really talk about what NUS does with the link and so forth. Well, visualize it a bit more. Tell your story in your about us section as well. And no content marketing, not sharing. Again, 90%. You want to be one of the 1%. Daryl. Daryl and the funky hair dude. Is he around? No, he's not here either. So Daryl obviously has a picture, but obviously needs a background picture. Needs uh, the about us section. Just really tell his story. You've got a lot of room to tell your story and put some visuals, put some videos on. And even here, there's no depth, for example. 
No content marketing. Is this lady around? I'm not even going to try and pronounce her word. <laughs> so she at least has a background picture, although it doesn't make a lot of sense, because it basically is it's a tourist. It's like a holiday snap. So unless you're in the holiday game, it doesn't really work. But she just got some really, really cool, she's got some good um, code words here, some keywords. And she does say what she does at the university, or that she doesn't connect with the university itself, and has no about us section, for example. And also does no content. Pay. She around. She's hiding now as well. She at least has a background picture. Uh, she does do, she's got a nice little uh, description of herself here, which is good. But very, not very brief comments there. Very brief description. And no content marketing. You are here. <laughs> so you look exactly the same as you do today, <laughs> which is fantastic. But again, no background picture. I need an about us section, but you have actually shared some content, so well done. You're the first person I've met, first shared content in this, in this place. Um, but even here, for example, you don't connect with the NUS page and don't say what you do. Oh, sorry. I misunderstood there. So you might want to connect, for example, with a company page, the NUS company page, and then put some content on, describe what you do, for example, and have an about us section as well. But you are sharing content, so fantastic. Uh, this lady here. No. Okay, so background picture, photograph. Uh, she does have an about us section, so at least she has one. She's probably the most intensive one here. Uh, so you do want to tell your story like this, because that's where people get an impression of you. It's like your cover page, your cover letter. Doesn't do too much description about what she does here, or content, for example. Zen Ping. Yes, hi, how are you? Well. You're very serious in your photograph there. <laughs> but at least you have a good photograph. But again, no background picture. You have a nice background picture. Even if it's like NUS, you can actually put that on there. Or if it was like the medical uh, brand or you know, something there, which actually is about something you do, your personal branding. Um, and even here, for example, you don't really say what you do. And there's no about us section, for example. And again, no content marketing. So as you can see, the 1990 plays out in this room just like it does across all social media. Lauren. So, uh, nice picture, <laughs> but again, no, no background, and apparently you're in communications. <laughs> so you really should be communicating on LinkedIn a bit more, because you have no about us section, but you do have some content, which is cool. And then here, obviously, you talk about what you do, but you have no links, say, website links, YouTube links, and so forth as well, which you could put on. So everyone else has escaped. If everyone else does want some feedback on their profile, they can just write to me afterwards and I will give them some. But you see, many people just make the same kind of errors or mistakes or just miss things out. But employer branding, as you can see here, is very important. So you've got someone like Cody, for example, she's used the background picture to market the brand. And you can imagine how powerful that would be if anyone at NUS actually used the NUS brand, for example. So it's simple things like that, the background picture would really enhance the brand. Or Paul here, for example, has got his vision statement. His whole vision statement is there. And I love the bit where he says, we drink beer and hug dogs. It's a brilliant branding statement. Great personality. And our team here, Black Marketing Team, we had an event called Social Selling. So all my team then had Social Selling on their background. And then we changed it recently to the Black Marketing brand, for example. You give people a choice between the black and the white. But it's brand consistency. These guys got big red on their pictures and their personal pictures. So every single member of the team stands out as a result of it. Alison here went for red and white. So you can see how just color works phenomenally well on LinkedIn. It's a very visual medium. Matthew here, every single member of the team had the orange circle. Well, I say every member of the team, every single member of the team apart from Nicole, who doesn't want to work there anymore. <laughs> but you do want to market your company through you, because people do buy people. Give you a couple of examples. LinkedIn, their LinkedIn company page on LinkedIn only has about four and a half, five million followers out of 630 million people. Whereas Jeff Wiener here has 10 million followers, who's the CEO of LinkedIn, because people are following people, they're not following company pages. Even here, Microsoft have six million followers. Bill Gates has 22 million followers. 
So Bill Gates is more likely to be more likely to follow Bill Gates than you are to follow Microsoft, because people follow people that don't follow company pages. Even Ali Soroson here, for example, the president of CEO Marriott, he's got about half a million followers, but when he actually shares, people resonate because they like Arnie, they like his stories. But the Marriott page has twice as many, but their engagement levels are 10 times less. So even though they've got more followers, they get no engagement because no one cares about the company page of a hotel, they care about Arnie. They resonate with Arnie, they're like Arnie. It's about people, not about company pages. Best example is Richard Branson. He's got about 19 million followers at the moment, but the top Virgin company page has about 140,000, Virgin Atlantic. So less than 1% of people who follow Richard Branson follow his company pages. But he markets his pages and his brand through his blogging, his content. Because people buy people, they don't buy companies. But they buy a company through a personal brand like Branson. And it's not what you know on LinkedIn, it is very much about who you know. So it's just like one of my favourite Mafia films, Goodfellas. It's about doing favours, people connecting with favours, relationship building, and actually working together to achieve your goals. Kevin Bacon used to have six degrees of separation across Hollywood. Every single person in Hollywood used to be connected by six degrees to Kevin. Now LinkedIn has reduced that to three. So basically you have three degrees of separation. Now what I mean by that is I have about 12,000 first connections in Singapore. That's only important because it allows me to reach 300,000 second, and then 1.5 million third, which basically means I can reach every single person in Singapore. So first, second, third degrees of separation. So you've got to have the right kind of first connections, not just any first connections. Across the whole of Asia Pac, just with my connections, I can reach about 147 million people. Just by having the right kind of first connections. Again, first connections, second connections, third connections. That's how LinkedIn works. My biggest market is Zurich. I can reach 657,000 people in Zurich by only having 500 connections. Because it's the right kind of connections. They all have lots of connections. And that's the ultimate goal. You want to have people who have connections in the area that you're interested in. In the area you want to advance your career in. In the area you want to be an entrepreneur in. So even though I don't live in Europe, I can still reach 125 million people in Europe through my connections. By having the right kind of connections. Because people do buy people. Great example is obviously Elon Musk. He gets away with stuff that me and you would never get away with. Because he's Elon Musk. And LinkedIn Sales Navigator, the only part of this presentation where the part, the premium part of LinkedIn, allows you to reach everybody you want to in any way you want to on LinkedIn. By creating, for example, searches. So you want to find a job, or a client, or an investment, or an employee, you can do so using Sales Navigator. Because all the searches, all the data you fill in, that I've been talking about, you can then use by the search platform of Sales Navigator. And then you come up with a list like this, 15 different target lists you can save, and they generate leads for you on a daily basis. So we do this for all our clients. We generate leads for them throughout the world, as you can see. London, Zurich, Shanghai, Auckland, doesn't matter. I can find clients anywhere for anyone using Sales Navigator. But you can also find the job you want, you can find the career you want, you can find the investment you want. Whatever you want to achieve, you can achieve by achieving that on LinkedIn. And then once in the search itself, you go through the data. So of these 1.6 million people here, 1.6 thousand people here of Singapore, one to 10 owners, for example, only 276 have actually posted on LinkedIn. So they're the ones you want to target because they're actually active on LinkedIn. And if they're also one of the orange ones, it means they're premium, they're actually paying for the service. So you want to target these people because they care more about and they want to engage on LinkedIn. You've got more chance of actually reaching them, more chance of actually reacting. Because LinkedIn doesn't give user numbers that are actually active, like Facebook does, or WeChat does, or Snap does. It gives total user numbers. And some of the user numbers may never have used LinkedIn for many, many years. So you have to write to them, and they may never respond. Whereas if they're actually active, and they're premium, they're more likely to respond. So when you're reaching out to them, think about that. You also want to reach out to open profilers. So open profilers are people who've ticked a box that says, please contact me for free. So a good example. 
If you do a search like this and you see an orange badge like that and click on it, nine times out of 10, they're an open profile because you get it as part of your premium badge, your premium subscription. So everyone might know Eduardo Saffron. He's the co-founder of Facebook. He's also the second richest man in Singapore and the richest if you exclude property. And you can actually write to him for free. So don't do it all at once. Don't say, Chris says, you might invest in my app. I've got a really good idea for some biotech. But he wants you to contact him because part of his deal is he has a venture capitalist here called B Capita and he basically invests in companies in Singapore. So you can actually send him your idea for free. Doesn't mean he's going to answer, but at least he'll see it or one of his team will see it. Whereas Darius here is not open profile, but he's hiring and he wants you to drop him a line. Unfortunately, the only way to contact Darius is by sending him an email. That means you have to pay to contact Darius. So who are you going to contact? The billionaire Eduardo for free? Or the not billionaire Darius and you have to pay for it? You can make your own mind up. But in summary, your reputation is on LinkedIn. And you are in control of your reputation, as you can see. You can put as much or as little effort as you want to on LinkedIn and people get the perception of a positive or negative or neutral profile as a result. So my story is, a few years ago I wrote a blog about taxi drivers and I got on the front page of all the newspapers for completely the wrong reason. And I got fired. Seven years ago I got fired from my job. So I realised after I got fired from my job that everyone knew who I was. Half the people actually agreed with my blog but always said, I wouldn't have said it that way, and I wouldn't have publicised it. It's a conversation in the pub, not a conversation you put on a blog. And then the other half didn't like me, like Marmite. Marmite's your classic love it or hate it brand. It's a bit like Nike, it's polarising. But I realised by using the brand recognition that I had for my kind of notoriety, if you like, that people knew who I was and would talk about my business black marketing. And that enabled me to build black marketing up to so such an extent where five years later, the Business Times put me on their front cover, much more respectable newspaper, for the right thing. For actually building a business and employing many, many Singaporeans and actually building it up based around LinkedIn. And that's how I've ended up with 1300 LinkedIn recommendations by working, actually delivering for our clients across the world. And that's what black marketing is all about. This is some of my fantastic team who work at black marketing. And we have now basically embraced diversity. We now employ men as well. <laughs> Not many, but we still employ some, don't we, Matthew? Yeah. Me and Matthew are about the only men there, basically. There's a couple more. But, so I went literally from villain to, a few weeks ago, actually becoming a Singaporean citizen. And I actually did a, I actually did a blog about it, which is still going viral which currently has about 625,000 views, 5,000 uh, likes and 1,000 comments. I think people are just so amazed that basically someone became a Singaporean citizen who was allowed to become a Singaporean citizen. But it just shows if you work hard and actually build up your reputation, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve in this fantastic country. If you want more tips, you can obviously read all three of my books, some of which you can get on things like Spotify or YouTube or Amazon Kindle Audible. And if you did like the talk, you can recommend me. I would appreciate it. It's fantastic. Thank you very much for listening.